Good afternoon, Brother Jim Beckwith reporting here from uh, Red State Watcher. What happened to Hillary Clinton last night? Did she even uh, say goodbye to the DNC, the rally waiting out there uh, for her to, you know, accept the, uh, being a president, but she didn't make it? Uh, I heard that she didn't even uh, come out. And that, that would be the, the, the way she deals with things. Why? Because she was never prepared to be president. She never could make it. She can't handle stress or being turned down. She has way too much pride. And I, when I say pride, man, she has pride so high, you wouldn't believe it. That's why she tried, cried uncontrollably last night. All night, pretty much. To me... Uh, there's a lot of ways you could remember Hillary Clinton. First, let me ask you, have, have we seen the last of her? Do you believe that, uh, that um, well, what do you think her, true? we saw her today, yeah. she teared up when she said it was a very painful yeah. experience, yeah. Um, but what was her reaction, do you think, while the results were coming in? Well, here's what I know, not my opinion. Okay. Uh, about 6.30 this morning, she called an old friend. She was tr crying inconsolably. She couldn't stop crying. And her friend said she, her female friend from way, way back, said it was even hard to understand what she was saying she was crying so hard. This is Hillary we're talking about. Eventually, her friend said she could make out that she was blaming James Comey, the director of the, of the FBI, for her loss, and, and this I don't understand exactly, the president of the United States for not doing enough. Really? Yes. Huh. Uh, see, uh, folks, th this proves that she's r literally a psychopath mentally sick. Uh, nothing is her fault, even though everything is her fault. <laughs> yeah, seriously, and that, that's not even overstating at all. Now, when I said to uh, the source, what did, what, do you, what did she mean by that? She said, well, she felt, Hillary felt that the president could have stopped Comey a long time ago because that's what Bill Oh, so said. not that he didn't campaign enough, but yeah. that he didn't do enough within the realm of the, the FBI investigation. Yes, exactly. Huh. I mean, you know, with the Clintons, and especially with Hillary, it's never her fault. Oh, well, of course. Do you think she went to bed early, not thinking she won, but because she, you know, went to bed and then woke up at 6.30, found out and called her friend? No, no, no. No, I mean, she, she stayed up all night, She stayed yeah. up all night, Okay, yeah. okay. And, but, but with the Clintons, it's always somebody, somebody else's, else's fault. fault. Yeah. And it's been this way with Hillary all her career. So there you go. All right, so here's the thing for uh, people who, uh, who don't think that, it, uh, that Democrats, uh, that this is a democratic nation for free rights. Uh, most people repeat that over and over and over. I'm going to show you how that is so terribly wrong. That they, you are brainwashed in school. I was 50, uh, 40 years ago, about 35 years ago, that to vote Democrat because Democrats are for your rights. That's what Democrat stands for. Okay for freedom and rights for the for the american people i'm going to show you some things that's going to blow your mind if you if you don't know your history because in school today the jesuit curriculum which is the uh, vatican roman catholic church the uh, mother harlot of abominations of the whole earth which is also mystery babylon um they don't want you to know the truth of where this nation was founded on but I'm going to show you, okay? Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance, which was taken out of school. Why? Because it showed the truth, okay? When I was a kid, we always said the Pledge of Allegiance, and we never had a problem with it. We were proud of it. So, the Pledge of Allegiance was actually started in 1892 by Socialist Minister Francis Bellamy, okay, who wrote it for many nations, okay? But when it started getting conformed over here to the U.S., in 1923, the words, the flag of the United States, were added 
to the original, I pledge allegiance to my flag and the republic for which it stands, one nation indivisible with liberty and justice for all, which is original. Okay, notice it says Republican, there's no Democrat. But the the problem is, is that, um, oh, I think I lost my link there. Um, Democrats was started in 1828. It was the first year they ever started, okay? Uh, if you know when this nation became a nation for, uh, when we got our independent of li independence of liberty, um, the, I forgot what you call it, the in, when we got our independence was in 1776, okay? I'm not a history buff, but was way before 1828, right? I mean, about 50 years, okay? So, and Democrats came later, okay? So, then in 1923, it got changed and we added United States of America. But in 1954, in response to communist threat of the times, President Eisenhower encouraged Congress to add the words, under God, creating the 31 World Pledge word pledge we say today, which is, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, not Democrat, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. But check this out. Section four of the flag code states this. Now, listen closely. Pledge of allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, again, with liberty and justice for all, to make it short, should be rendered by attending or standing at attention facing the flag, which you can't even get from football players nowadays. It's such a disgrace. With the right hand over the heart, when not in uniform, men should remove any non-religious headdress with their right hand and hold it at the left shoulder, the hand being over the heart. Notice it says non, but we never even had Muslims in this nation. It was a God-fearing nation of the uh, God of Abraham and Jesus Christ. Okay, so it says you can leave your leave on your religious headdress, whatever it may be. That's right. But if it's a non-religious, it needs to be taken off. Okay, in respect. Okay. So that's uh, the fact of it is, is that Democrats never even came around to 1828. But what about Democrats? A short history of uh, Democrats and uh, Republicans, as you see here. Let me move it up. The following are a few basic historical facts that every American should know. And this is, this is the root of Hillary Clinton and all the Democrats. The Republican Party was founded primarily to oppose slavery, and Republicans eventually abolished slavery. The Democratic Party fought them and tried to maintain and expand slavery. The 13th Amendment abolishing slavery passed in 1865 with 100% Republican support, but only 23% Democrat support in Congress. See? So, all those lies you keep getting in your public schools are pure, unadulterated lies, okay? They're disgusting Jesuit lies about our history. A Republican stands for your rights. A Democrat stands for slavery. Mm -hmm. Why is this indisputable fact so rarely mentioned? PBS documentaries about slavery in the Civil War barely mention it. For example, one can certainly argue that the parties have changed in 50, 150 years, more about that below, but that does not change the historical fact that it was the Democrats who supported slavery and Republicans who opposed it. But not only that, but the, the nation was founded in its independence, became independence in 1776, and Democrats didn't even come until 50 years later. So the foundation was the Republic of the United States, which was Republicans, God-fearing Christians. So that's where um, Hillary Clinton came from. Okay, that's what she stands for. And that's why she is against rights. She talks like she's for rights, 
but she's a major deceiver and she's a psychopath okay she's a very sick woman obviously crying all night hysterically can't even understand what she's saying it's no wonder why she never came out to even say I'm sorry we lost she couldn't even handle saying that she can't deal with reality she blames everyone else on her problems but anyway breaking liberals are now protesting democracy in Union Square isn't this funny again protesting democracy they think it means rights but it doesn't at all this is this is why I continue to call them libertards because they don't even know our history they don't even know what Democrat stands for and a good name for it is Democrip massive protests in Union Square hard to get good picks just a massive and you, we all know all the the massive uh, uh, you know Black Lives Matter, you know, even though all lives matter, uh, you know, but all of their massive uh, uh, violence that they've done, burning down the Republican uh, uh, geo, uh, in, uh, I think it was in North Carolina, the headquarters of the Republican uh, National Party. So, you know, it's amazing, but conservative Republicans or the foundation of this nation where they stood f against slavery, please learn your history, folks. Please stop with the nonsense. Stop believing whatever you hear. Look at this massive protest. Of course, it doesn't look violent, but I heard today in uh, this morning, uh, before, real early this morning, last night, that uh, in or Oakland, California, that there was uh, plenty, not riots, but there was fires being set all over the place in the streets. Yeah. By the Democrats again. But thank God a lot of those Democrats crashed the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, Can Canadian immigrant uh, website last night trying to get in so that, you know, cause all the sodomites and uh, idiots who, you know, don't know what they're doing uh, want to get out because Trump became president they crashed the site <laughs> you know that's the funny thing is it doesn't matter where they go they crash the they crash the party <laughs> you know and Democrats stand for drugs sex and rock and roll well Republicans even though there are a lot of Republicans who do that need to get right with God for the most part, they don't stand for that. And so here is the rhetoric coming from the uh, protest. You know what they're saying? There's something, something like saying like uh, sexist, Donald Trump, anti-gay. And you see the Black Lives Matter sign right there. See it? So they're calling him. So you see, they're calling, they're saying he's anti-gay and Black Lives Matter, and this makes perfect sense. Um, it's true. Uh, so what do you, what do we have out here? We have a bunch of sodomites, and we have a bunch of Black Lives Matter. And you know, they don't know any better. They're just brainwashed. They're trying to start. A civil war but you see they see the pressure coming down uh, Obama's still in power right now they see the pressure coming down and Obama's still in power and so they're trying to exercise their you know their rights and of course you know to protest but they're trying to start a war and they know that Obama's still in in uh, in the White House, okay, so they're going to be a little bit stronger, and but once he's out, they're going to back off. Um, the, why? Uh, because nobody's going to listen to him anymore. The police are going to be stronger. The police are going to take him down, and they're going to stop it eventually. Okay. Anyway, uh, just want to show you the rhetoric. Uh, what are they? Uh, they are basically uh, Muslims. Black Lives Matter and Sodomites.
okay and as far as I'm concerned you know you should just head out the door and go move to Canada if you don't like it because Donald Trump is not going to put up with this continual disgusting behavior okay he's going to give much more strength back to the police and stop this nonsense thank you for listening